The inspiration for the Pallet House was a competition where we were asked to design transitional housing for the refugees returning to Kosovo. So Azina and I were doing lots of sketches, thinking about what could we use that would be recyclable, as recycled, as ubiquitous throughout the world, um, as a building module. We wanted to use a modular product that was wasted in the developed world and to recycle it. So we were looking at bottles, we were looking at tires, we were looking at various, various things. One night I was walking home thinking, I have to find the solution by the time I get home. And I literally tripped over a wooden shipping pallet in the middle of the sidewalk and brought it back to the studio and that was that. There are about 150 million pallets that are dumped in landfills in the U.S. alone. With that 150 million pallets, you could house most or all of the refugees in Haiti, which is about 2 million of them. So, yes, they can be used to shelter the refugees of the world, which is 33 million. And it takes about a year and a half of America's pallet production to house the entire refugee around the world. Model it for me. <laughs> We've designed a few of them as small as like 100 square feet to up to about 300 square feet. This is so cool! But the one we've built most often is about 250 square feet and includes a sleeping loft, a dining room, a kitchen area, a bathing area, and a living room. It can comfortably accommodate a family of four or five people. We were invited by the Architecture Triennale in Milan to participate in an exhibition they were having called Casa per Tutti, A House for All, which was a celebration of the last hundred years of design of primarily affordable housing or emergency housing. We've developed a set of almost IKEA-type assembly instructions and anybody could follow it. The only thing you need are basic hand tools. So you need hammer, nails, crowbar is very helpful. Um, obviously it goes faster when you have power tools like a nail gun and a drill and a saw. But you can definitely do it with basic hand tools. With Electric hand tools, about four or five people can assemble a 250 square foot house in five or six days. <laughs> Azine and I have built uh, a few pilot houses ourselves with the assistance of a couple of helpers. No, but I don't think they can get it up, it's too long. No, we did the same thing over there, we tilted that one out. The only part that gets a little heavy is it's easy to prove pre-assemble a few pallets on the ground and lifting them up on the roof takes a couple of strong guys. Basically, anyone can be trained to build a pallet house. We built it and designed it assuming that there would not be any electricity. So it can be built with just simple tools or with more advanced tools. We've even built a few structures where we just strap them together, so all you need is a strapping tool and plastic or metal strapping material. We've also used zip ties to build entire structures, which is pretty quick, cheap and easy and doesn't require any tools. But the beauty of this project is that you can make it as simple as possible or as complex as possible. You can be as uh, raw or as finished, so depending on what you clad it with, it could be a complete affordable housing project rather than a transitional housing. But the structure of the pallet itself, because of the cavity that it has, it allows for plumbing and electric wires and insulation to be incorporated in it. And it's a very sturdy product to begin with, that's why it's used for shipping all over the world. The pallets are provide for the basic structure of the house, for the walls, the floors, the roof. 
But the idea was the pallets would be naturally available because they would be arriving with shipments of clothing and aid, like medicine, and building materials, and food. So there'd be a bunch of discarded pallets at a refugee situation or an emergency situation, which could immediately be nailed or strapped together by any local people. And hopefully after the initial emergency was over and the initial UN tent that was provided, which could be draped over the pallet structure, was shredded, which would be about six months of a year. By that time, hopefully the locals would be able to gather enough rubble, dirt, mud, straw, sand, whatever locally available materials there were, and be able to begin to insulate the house and clad the house in the appropriate vernacular materials. Okay, you got the roof here. This is designed as a transitional home with the possibility of becoming permanent. So depending on what kind of materials you clad it with, it can last as long as any other wooden house or structure could. The cost of the materials varies depending on whether the material or the labor was donated or not. If most of the materials are donated and you just need to buy nails and a hammer, it can be less than $500 to build a house. If you are going to clad it, as we did in Milan, with completely clad it with corrugated plastic sheathing, uh, we even had a garden and plants. We built all the furniture out of pallets as well. We had a solar panel for lighting. Then the cost was about $3,000 to build that one. We built a prototype which took place in Prince Charles's Royal Gardens. That house ended up getting clad differently because there was only a couple of days to build in the gardens. But initially we designed it uh, with a traditional English thatch roof and wattle and dot cladding. I think part of the appeal is that the idea is almost so obvious and pallets are so ubiquitous and it seems so simple and straightforward. It's the basic wood stud construction that is used in all wood frame houses, um, so it could absolutely be used in the developed world to build affordable homes for people. We get a lot of calls from the pallet industry to, who want to donate pallets to us as if we already have the workshop to build the pallets. The important question to ask is why this project has not been implemented in an actual refugee crisis. One of the difficulties in realizing the construction of the pallet house in refugee situations is not only the issue of land rights, which is huge, the difficulty that we've had is much more about politics and economics. Pallets are so ubiquitous, and not only are pallets built of recycled materials, but they're also recyclable. Rather than let them just get burnt up uh, as firewood or thrown in a trash heap, we propose to use them to build housing, and we're particularly interested in the way that these modules can transition from a temporary shelter to a permanent shelter.